The video of Tyree Nichols being killed by the Memphis Police Department is raising a lot of questions, including were the cops actually members of the Vice Lords gang where Nichols' beating was ordered by the gang? Now we don't want to jump on every wild tinfoil hat that circulates online, but they did state that three of the officers have videos from previous beatings that they carried out on behalf of the gang. So if this is true, I imagine it will come to service soon, because I did find it bizarre how aggressive the arrest began. <laughs> and how nonchalant the officers were after. <laughs> Outrageous as the claim of criminal gang members being inside law enforcement is, there definitely was a path in, as the New York Post reports on Memphis PD severely relaxing their hiring practices, stating recruits need a mere 54 college credits and five years of work experience. So according to the city of Memphis, taking some college classes and working at McDonald's for a while somehow qualifies you to carry a gun and make some arrests. But the more alarming point is they were offering waivers for convicted felons, with other reports that this was the city's doing and not the police department, as they believe certain communities weren't being represented in law enforcement. So the city hired these cops, circumventing the police department's requirements. Which again, you can't go based solely off a social media post, but you could see their diversity and inclusion push for city jobs, where apparently they were specifically targeting certain groups for law enforcement. Black and Hispanic officers use force far less frequently than white male officers. Problem is, like you said, few people of color want to be police officers. So a new look to the police force is going to take a new approach to targeting, acquiring, and training cops of color. And it's sad, but it really takes a tragedy like Tyree Nichols to see the consequences of affirmative action, aka the soft bigotry of low expectations. Because getting a more diverse law enforcement sounds great on the surface, but not many people emphasize diversity when it comes to your personal safety. Case in point, if you needed high mortality brain surgery, is it important that your team of doctors, nurses, and surgeons are equally represented by each minority group? Or do you just want the very best person available? Diversity has nothing to do with survival. Liberal arts college, sure, whatever. But giving guys badges and guns is something entirely different, especially when you find that the Memphis police chief herself was actually fired from the Atlanta Police Department for botching an internal affairs sex crimes investigation. And apparently these lax hiring practices are hitting other blue cities like Chicago. So maybe citizens will learn that voting for politicians that campaign on villainizing police officers and defunding law enforcement are only exasperating their problems. And I know people argue that horrendous crime rates is just what happens in big cities, but somehow we don't see these same issues in places like Korea or Japan, or even take the continent out of the equation. As Tim Poole brought up, places like New York City when being run by Republicans like Rudy Giuliani, crime started to subside. But never mind things like solutions. Look at CNN's explanation of five black cops killing a black man, apparently it's because of racism. Or the Independence coverage were pointing out that this was a intra-racial crime. Oh, that's a dangerous distraction. With Twitter users stating racism is what policing is. Nichols' death was because of white supremacy. Or the worst take being, the cops are non-FBA because the circumference and diameter of their hairline. And if you're like me, you needed to learn what FBA was, which is a foundational black American that can trace their bloodline back to American slavery. So now it's not just the color of your skin. You can now be condemned for racism based on the circumference and diameter of your hairline. We're officially beyond goalpost moving. We're now in the territory of, you can't win these arguments against us because we make it up as we go along. And the sad part is, some people just accept perpetual blame. And we say, we did this. We did this. White supremacy did this. I'm talking about Tyree Nichols. And it's disappointing because Tyree Nichols' video is something that 99% of Americans can agree on. That was egregious. The officers need to be in prison, and we need reform in Memphis PD. But nah, people just want to loot. Because nothing says justice for wrongful death than free video games. And the looters also hit Hibbit's sporting goods. Damn, I got a big air box. <laughs> they hit pawn shops. And I get it, not all protesters are looters, the same way not all coppers are criminals. You can demand looters go to jail without being against peaceful process. So why is it so hard to understand that you can demand that bad cops go to prison without abolishing the police? But no, bad cops do bad stuff so the National Guard has to roll in. Because citizens want to burn down their own communities. And across the country in Los Angeles, Wells Fargo had to get hit. With citizens feeling emboldened to go directly at LAPD. And we saw similar activity in New York City. No, get out. 
Now interestingly enough, I believe that's BLM leader Hank Newsom standing in the background, where he was just recently seen saying, we ain't never taking effing violence off the table, and you F with us, we F stuff up, which reminds me of that crappy X-Men movie. where the New York Post reports on the protesters that got arrested, where one had a previous arrest for an alleged grabbing of a man's testicles during an argument, and another had an arrest for allegedly strangling a mom and pushing a two-year-old. So it's hard to say who's hijacking who. Is it opportunist grifters hopping on a valid movement utilizing violent criminals to do their bidding? Or is it violent individuals hopping on a valid movement to legitimize their criminal behavior? Or is this just simply a tornado of awful people taking advantage of awful situations while idiots cheer them on and finance them? So let me know in the comment section why do you think society just tolerates this type of behavior? And if you appreciate my concise, lighthearted commentary on what's really going on in the world, subscribe to this channel, then check out the video on the wave of pipe attacks on Los Angeles freeways and how LAPD just drives right by.